Okay, hi everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at balance and redox reactions, which is one of the really important skills that you need for this standard. For excellence, you need to be able to fully balance redox reactions, and for merit, you need to be able to accurately balance half equations for all reactions. So the process that we take when we balance a redox reaction, first thing is that we're going to assume, unless we're told otherwise, that the reaction is occurring in an aqueous acidic condition. You can balance redox reactions in other situations, and we will look at that in a separate video, um, but that will be largely an extra for experts, mostly useful for those who are taking a scholarship. So we balance each half equation separately, then you may need to multiply one or other half equation so that the electrons lost and the electrons gained are equal. And then you combine your two half equations and simplify it. So to balance each half equation, the key things that you need to do, first thing you do is you balance the major species, the thing that is not hydrogen or oxygen, the thing that's actually oxidizing or reducing. So might be, usually it's a transition metal, sometimes it's sulfur, carbon, or other atoms, but that's the first thing that you need to balance. Then you can balance the oxygens by adding water, then you balance the hydrogens by adding H pluses, and finally you balance the charges by adding electrons. Now you may not need to multiply either equation, you may need to multiply just one equation, you may need to multiply both equations such that the electrons become equal, because all of the electrons being lost in the oxidation reaction must be gained in the reduction reaction. You then recombine your equations, and you may need to simplify them. So let's look at some examples. Okay, this one is a really simple example, um, and you should actually be able to balance this one by eye, but just to work through the process, first thing we do is we split it into two half equations. Iron turning into Fe2+, plus, copper 2+, plus turning into copper metal. To balance the first one, the iron to iron 2, then the first thing we're doing, we go, are the ions balanced? Yes, there are. There's one iron on each side of the equation. Are the oxygens balanced? No oxygens. Don't need to worry about that. Hydrogens balanced? No hydrogens. Don't need to worry about that. Charges balanced. You will always need to add electrons. If you don't need to add electrons, it's not a redox reaction. Okay, so you will need to add electrons. We've got a zero charge on the left-hand side because there's no charge on the iron. That's iron metal that has an oxidation number of zero. We have a two plus charge on the iron two. Therefore, we need to add two electrons to get those balanced. Same thing with the, with the copper. We've got one copper on each side. That's fine. No oxygens, no hydrogens. A two plus charge on the left, a zero charge on the right, so we add two electrons to the left. Now the next thing to note here is that you'll see in one reaction I've got electrons on the left hand side, in the other reaction I've got electrons on the right hand side. That is really important. If you don't have electrons on both sides, then you cannot have a redox reaction because you can't combine them and mix them. So Putting them back together, you get exactly the same reaction as the one we started with. Now, you might look at that and go, well, why did you bother even doing this? Simply to show you the process. So let's have a look at a harder example. Here we have permanganate and iron 2 forming the Mn2 plus and Fe3 plus ions. First thing again, split it into two half equations. We'll look at the easier one first. Anytime you see just Fe turning into Fe or something like that, that's a nice easy one to do first. So start with that. Okay, so iron 2 plus turn into iron 3 plus. We have equal numbers of ions on both sides. No need to do anything with that. We have no oxygens. We have no hydrogens. So the only thing we need to do is to make the charges equal. With 2 plus charge on the left and a 3 plus charge on the right, we add one electron, making it balanced. The second equation, we have permanganate on the left and manganese 2 plus on the right. So we start off with the major species. That's the manganese. 
I have one manganese on the left, one manganese on the right, no problem with that. Oxygens, I have four oxygens on the left, so I'm going to need to add four waters on the right. That gives me the oxygens needed to balance. Of course, now that means that I have eight hydrogens on the right hand side, so to balance those, I need eight hydrogens on the left hand side. Final step is to look at the charges. On the left hand side, I have eight plus charges from my 8H plus and one minus from my permanganate. So it's seven pluses on the left hand side. I have two pluses here on the right hand side. Therefore, to get from seven pluses on the left to two pluses on the right, I need to add five electrons. So now I have my two balanced half equations. However, that is not the end of the story. So with my two half equations, the next thing I need to do is to multiply one or other or both equations so that the electrons are equal. At this stage, I have five electrons being gained by the permanganate, but only one electron being lost by the iron. So to get the five electrons that the permanganate needs, ultimately five Iron 2s need to turn into 5 iron 3s, which will release 5 electrons. So if you multiply that whole equation by 5, then we get our 5 electrons. And then we can combine our equation back together. Once it's combined, you can see that we have 5 electrons on the left and 5 electrons on the right. Anytime something's present on both sides of the equation, we can cancel those out. And there we have our overall equation. However, the last thing we need to do is double check to make sure we've balanced it correctly. Now, everybody makes mistakes. I make mistakes. But when I double check these things, that's where you find out where those mistakes are. So, I count up on the left-hand side of the equation how many of each type of atom do I have, how many plus or minus charges do I have. Then I do the same thing on the right hand side. If those balance, if they're all equal, atoms and charges, then I know it's balanced. If the atoms are balanced but the charges are not, I've multiplied something incorrectly. If the atoms aren't balanced, then probably I have actually um, balanced one of the half equations wrong. So on the left hand side of the equation, I have five ions, one manganese, four oxygens, eight hydrogens, and a total of 17 plus charges. How does that come about? Well, I have five times two is 10 pluses here from the iron. Another eight times one is another eight pluses, and then one minus. So 10 plus, eight plus, one minus gives me overall 17 pluses. On the right hand side, I have five ions, a manganese, four oxygens, eight hydrogens. Five times three pluses is 15, plus two is 17 pluses. Therefore, all my atoms and all my charges are balanced. My equation must be fine. Okay, now, just at the extreme end of the scale, this is quite tricky. Okay, we have permanganate and chlorine gas forming Mn2 plus and the perchlorate ion. However, no matter how complicated or tricky it is, we do the same process. Split it into two half equations. So permanganate turning into Mn2 plus, it's the same equation that we've just done before, so it balances exactly the same way. Not going to go through that one again. Chlorine to perchlorate. This one's slightly trickier. First thing to note is we have two chlorines. So we need two chlorates. That then gives us eight oxygens, so we need eight waters, which gives us 16 hydrogens, so we need 16 H pluses. And then finally, to balance the charges, we need 14 electrons. Those are probably bigger numbers than anything you've seen in one of these examples before, which is why I'm showing it to you. Okay, so 
before we can go on, we have five electrons on one equation, 14 electrons on the other equation. There is no way to do that easily. There is no easy common multiplier or common denominator. We're just going to have to cross multiply them. So we're going to multiply the top equation, the permanganate equation, by 14. And we're going to multiply the bottom equation here by 5. And it's going to lead to some ugly numbers. So 5 times 14 gives us 70 electrons. 8 times 14 gives us 112 hydrogens, 14 permanganates, 14 Mn2 pluses, and 56 waters. Then multiply the other equation by 5. And we've got 5 eighths of 40 hydrogens, 5 chlorines, 10 perchlorates, 80 H pluses, and 70 electrons. Yes, I promised you it was going to be ugly. So let's have a look at those. There they are for you. Okay, now we have to put these back together, and then this one's definitely going to need some simplification. Okay, so we've got 70 electrons on each side, so we can cancel out the electrons as we put it back together. And then we can just put all the stuff on the left hand side the 112 H pluses, the 14 permanganates, the 40 waters, the 5 chlorines, they all make the left hand side. And we can put the right hand side together as well, the 14 Mn2 pluses, 56 waters, 10 chlorines, 80 H pluses. Ooh, that is one yuck looking equation. And yet you cannot divide any of it in a way that will simplify it any further because there's no common denominator at all. Okay, so what we're going to do to simplify this further we have 80 H pluses on the right hand side and 112 H pluses on the other side. We can subtract 80 H pluses from both sides of this and that will simplify it. That takes it down from 112 H pluses to 32 on the left and it gets rid of the hydrogens on the right. We also have water on both sides of the equation so we could subtract 40 waters from the both sides of the equation. And that brings it down, gets rid of the waters out of the left hand side and brings it down to just 16 on the right hand side. At that stage it's still not a pretty equation but it's a heck of a lot better than it was. Okay, so final check, especially with an equation like this, we need to make sure we've got everything accounted for. So 14 manganese, 5 twos of 10 chlorines, 14 fours of 56 oxygens, 32 hydrogens, charges, we've got 32 pluses, 14 minuses, that's going to leave us as an overall 18 plus on the left hand side. Let's check the other side. 14 pluses, uh, 14 permanganates, 10 chlorines, oxygens. We've got 16 here from the water, we've got 40 here from the perchlorate. 40 plus 16 gives me 56 oxygens. I have 16 twos of 32 hydrogens. And charges here I have 14 twos of 28 pluses and 10 minuses gives me 18 pluses. Even though it's really ugly, it still balances. Okay, that's more than enough for this lesson. I will see you all next time. Thanks for listening.